Somebody pointed this out to me the other day. See this? See this awesome, like, brush tip copy marker? It has a second side. <laughs> the irrelevant things manufacturers make these days. It's crazy. G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and I kid, it's all in jest. Of course these Copic mask markers have always had two sides. The chisel tip is useful, so don't get me wrong, I do use it on occasion, but I and most people I know much prefer the brush tip because it feels so like velvety smooth, you can get detail, you can do like little, little tiny details and it's just much easier to cleanly fill in larger areas. But I think more importantly when it comes to blending two colours, the brush tip is just really soft and it makes that blending so much easier so that when I mix them in together like this, with that soft brush tip, it all merges in and it's so silky smooth. However, doing the same thing with a chisel tip, I mean, let's try it here just with, uh, we've got some golden yellow. There we go, oh, I'm running out of golden yellow. Now let's go, uh, let's go cadmium yellow. All right, Ch chisel tip, cadmium yellow. There you go, that's going down. And let's go chisel tip orange. So to blend these, it's just, it's just harder to get a really clean looking blend. It just looks a little more geometric. Now don't get me wrong, it's not that bad, but when it comes to details and smooth mixing, it's just less comfortable. Your options with a chisel tip are essentially this or this. It's really hard to sort of navigate between thicknesses. <laughs> and then another thing that's sort of hard to notice, but you can see at the start of the stroke and the end of the stroke, it's sort of darker. And that's just because immediately when you put that chisel tip down, it's just putting the ink in straight away and then when you stop, it's putting more ink in. So it's hard to get like a really even flat tone and you end with something that looks a lot more blocky. Now I am actually genuinely curious as to whether there are advantages or anything that is surprisingly good or comfortable if I try and create an entire art piece using only these chisel tips. So I'm gonna try and do that today, but because I'm using chisel tips and this is the chisel tip art uh, challenge, I'm not limiting myself to just these chisel tips. I'm gonna allow myself to use anything which has a chisel tip, which includes these Copic wide markers, which have very, very big chisels, which is kind of cool. So I don't know if they'll come in useful or not, but I have a few. And then I even have these, which have chisel tips, including permanent markers. The chisel tips we've come to know and love. They have some pretty rich dark colors. Obviously there's no blending there, but I don't know, they, they might have some uses somewhere in the piece. And then we have some highlighters, which also have chisel tips and, uh, you know, are hard to work with as well. But I don't know, I, I feel like it'd be fun to just only use chisel tips and just see what I can create and how much fun I can have with only using chisel tips. It's a, it's a bit of a personal curiosity experiment that I'm bringing you guys along for the ride for and I hope you enjoy it. Because I'm using only chisel tips, I think it's only fitting that I create a chisel themed artwork. I don't quite know what that means yet, but I'm gonna start off with some experimentation, fiddle around on some scrap pieces of paper, use my chisel tips to color experiment, come up with palettes and just some blocking, and then move on to a final piece. I will be using pencil and fine liners and stuff like that, but the entire color schemes and all that stuff will completely be done and executed with chisel tips. To be honest, I don't know what to expect from this, if it's gonna be really frustrating and not look good, or if it's gonna be surprisingly easy and fun. I guess that's just part of the experiment, and I hope you guys enjoy coming along for the ride. <sighs> Let's get stuck into it. I start out with a few thumbnail sketches playing around with the concepts. I knew I wanted to do a drawing with some kind of artisan sculpting with a chisel, but I didn't know the angle I wanted to take. Maybe there was going to be a sci-fi twist in the scene, or maybe something fantastical like they're fixing the wooden arm of a giant wooden robot, but in the end I decided to go for something more intimate. You see, because I would struggle with details and blending, I thought it would work best if I could get up close to the sculptor, and knowing the aesthetic of the chisel tips would be pretty rough and blocky, I decided to build a more rustic looking scene, with an elderly carpenter carving out the figure of a woman. Happy with the concept, it was time to move on to the real thing, starting out with a foreground and working my way back, gently working out the solid geometry of the figures and the character, whose hands proved particularly tricky with the angle 
all being low and close. And they could easily look awkward, and they are as important to the execution of this sort of piece as is his expression or the statue that is carving. So I did my best to make them work and I was pretty happy with how they turned out in the end. I moved in and added the details, paying a lot of attention to the expression of the old man, the lines on his face and the texture of the wooden figure being carved. Then, after experimenting with a selection of colours for the background, I start adding the colour layers in. I found the chisel tips extremely dry to work with. It caught me off guard a little bit, to be honest. They must be like way drier than the brush tips because I literally haven't used these sides of the markers probably at all. So in the end, this wasn't really a big deal. If anything, some of the drier markers served to add interesting texture and streaky grain to the background and the shadows I was building up, adding to that rustic cabin aesthetic I was going for. So. Let's just call it a happy accident. When I was happy with the background, I blended it all together with my big chisel tip wide colorless blender, which sort of serves to mix everything together just very faintly and push it lightly into the background. I moved on to the skin tones, layering from dark to light and careful to respect the direction that the light would come from while trying to build up some contrast with dark areas and mixing in some fleshy tones for a more natural look. Layer by layer through the rest of the piece, I try to allow the chisel tips to work naturally, while being as accurate and mindful of texture and lighting as possible. And slowly but surely, the piece really started to come together. Now with the hard work done and the entire piece filled with colour, I move on to the last two steps that would transform this piece into something much sharper and more complete. First, the line work, and it so happens that I found a calligraphy pen in my collection of supplies whose chisel tip fit perfectly with the angle of art challenge that I've been taking in this video. So I use this calligraphy pen to give solid edges to the foreground elements while adding that chiseled look, if you'll excuse my choice of words, by using occasional thin textures and shading and drawing with sharp, jagged lines overall. Lastly, I went over the entire piece with washes of yellow and bright gold emanating from the windows and bleeding onto the edges of the surfaces of the figures on the sides closest to the light source. I felt like this would serve to add dimension visually so that the colours wouldn't look so flat, but also to accentuate the emotion of the piece with a warmth, as if the scene we're watching is full of memory and flooded with sentimentality. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the result of my chisel tip challenge. I gotta say, I am like, I am so surprised and satisfied by the result. I usually go for something a little more like epic or I don't know, something a little cartoony or comic book-esque. Obviously this still has uh, that comic book-esque aesthetic to it, but I really like that storytelling feel. It almost feels like it could be in, uh, in some sort of a storybook of some sort. I'm just really enjoying the outcome of this. I'll be honest, the chisel tips weren't the worst to work with, but they also weren't particularly great, especially when it came to details and edges of things. Uh, you'll notice that obviously there's no clean edges, but I decided to try and just go with that aesthetic instead of fight against it. And I feel like that rough look has added to more of the charm of the piece than uh, I, I expected or, or might have initially planned. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below for future challenges you think I should try or styles you think I should attempt. And of course, if you're new to Draw With Jazza, hit that subscribe button and join us for the arty party moving forward. And of course, if you want, you can hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss a video. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.